Have you ever thought about building an airplane? A lot of people have, but it's a pretty daunting project. There's a lot of materials that you can consider using when building an airplane. Some airplanes use aluminum, very popular material. Uh, other ones use a steel tube fuselage, which you have to learn how to weld in order if you're going to do something like that. With aluminum, you need to learn how to rivet. Uh, you need the tools and stuff that go along with that. And there's composite materials, fiberglass, carbon fiber. That's another skill set that you need to learn if you're going to build out of those materials. They all have their pros and cons. But the one material most of us are familiar with is wood. And believe it or not, there's a lot of home-built airplanes that are made out of wood. A lot of the early designs and even some of the later designs use wood as a material because it's available, most of us know how to use it, and it's not quite so intimidating. The popular wood, most of the things that are designed, airplanes that are designed, use wood like this. This is Sitka spruce. Sitka grows in the Pacific Northwest. It's a wonderful wood, really easy to work with. But it's a little expensive. It only grows in a, in a certain region along the coast. And since it's such a nice wood, it also gets used in musical instruments, and a lot of it gets shipped overseas. Here's a piece that normally comes in the rough like this. And so you need the ability to plane it down. I have a little 12-inch delta planer that works really well. And as you can see on this board, you can see how nice and straight grain that wood is. And that's a requirement for aircraft wood. The end of this, I'm not sure it's going to show up really well. This is the growth rings, and for spruce, the specs say you need at least six growth rings per inch. Can be tighter than that, that's fine. This board actually has about 18 growth rings per inch. It's fairly dense. This was a slow-growing tree. And one of the other things to look for is runout, and that's the, the angle of the grain across the face of the wood. The specs say no more than a runout <coughs> of one inch in 15 inches. So if the wood, if the grain goes diagonal across here, that's really going to weaken the board. So you want straight grain, no waviness, and down the length of the board, and tight growth rings. As I mentioned, Sitka spruce is expensive, and it can be hard to find. If you live on the West Coast, you're in a little better luck. I'm in Pennsylvania. It's really hard to find here, and pricey. This board back here, I just picked up and I drove up to Boston. It was a 350 mile trip one way. And that particular board cost about $110. I had to buy four of them for the project that I'm doing. Sounds like a lot. You know, it's over $400 uh, for four boards. But it's, I mean, this is a piece of one of those boards. It's clear, except for a couple of holes here. <clears throat> about 90% of this board is going to be usable. And I can extract a lot of pieces out of it, even the big pieces that I need. But are there alternatives? Yeah, there's lots of alternative woods, and some are available probably closer to where you live. Uh, here's one here. This is Douglas fir. Again, grows in the Pacific Northwest, but it's available across the country. It's used a lot for flooring. It used to be used in cabinets and stuff. Uh, here's a piece right here. You can see very, very straight grained, fairly tight growth rings. Fur, the specs say at least eight growth rings per inch. And it's a little bit heavier and a little bit stronger than spruce, but it makes a, a good substitute. This particular board uh, thought it was supposed to be a kitchen cabinet. It turns out it's really supposed to be part of an airplane. I've used kitchen cabinet wood before in airplane projects, and the wood doesn't tell what it's supposed to be. As long as it meets the specs, it's fine for use. Here's a board. This one. There's another uh, piece of Douglas fir, came from Home Depot. Home Depot and Lowe's both have some Douglas fir. A lot of what they have is uh, listed as SPF, spruce pine fir. In those cases, you're not really sure which species of wood you're getting. But if it's stamped, and there's a little stamp over here on the edge, it says D fir. So if you look at the wood, you'll see all the wood will have a stamp on it and tell you what it is. So as long as this is eight growth rings per inch, it can be used for or what we're going to do with an airplane. Unfortunately, this board isn't, but there's some things I want to show you about this board as far as extracting wood from it. So if, if the growth rings were tight enough on this, and you can see there, we need at least eight per inch, and there's probably only five or six per inch on this board, we could use it. And if you look here, you can see the grain is pretty straight. It's, it's within the 15 to one runout. So we can get pieces of wood that we need for our airplane Oh, from 
you know, in this section right through here and up to that wide. So this becomes a little bit like a puzzle when you're working with a piece of wood like this to decide, do I want to get a long, thin piece? Is that what I need? And uh, avoid these knots here? Or do I want a thicker piece that's not quite as long uh, and come short of the knot there? Here's the other side. You can see here we've got some knots that we're dealing with. So you got to look at where those knots come through and how they're going to affect the piece you want. This is the, the pitch wood here. This is very soft. You can't, I can stick my finger right into that. So you have to avoid things like that. Uh, so why would you take the time to try to extract all the pieces that you need out of lumber like this that's not perfect, that has all these knots and stuff in it? Well, one is, is cost. This board here costs about $9. That one back there costs 110 So, with a little bit of patience, you can start extracting the pieces you need. One of the things you need when you start building is a cut list. And this is an example of a, a cut list that I made. I went over the plans and started identifying all the different pieces of wood that are in the plans and listing them out by the dimensions. You know, is it a quarter inch by a quarter inch? Is it one inch by one inch? And how long it is? And then I take a look at these boards I get locally and decide which pieces I can get out of any of those boards. You don't have to get a whole lot of pieces out of a $9 board to make up for a $110 board. And here's a pile of lumber that I've already cut out of local boards from Home, Home Depot and uh, Lowe's. And some of them like this are, I've got them all listed as this one's number seven. That corresponds to one of the, the pieces of wood on my cut list. In this case, I needed a whole bunch of number sevens. A lot of these boards say number seven. And they end up being about three quarter inch square. But I was able to get straight grain pieces that uh, in between these knots. So this one is going to end here and end here. So it avoids these two knots. I got a whole pile of my number sevens and number fives and, and so on. A lot of these pieces go in the smaller areas of the airplane. They're the parts of the fuselage, the uprights, the diagonals that don't have to be terribly long. I was able to get a few few spar pieces out of it because the particular airplane I'm doing has very short wing sections. As you get longer and bigger diameter, it gets increasingly harder to find those pieces out of local lumber. So if you can get a project started with local lumber, that can kind of get you going. That, that may be why you want to do it. Is it worth it? You have to decide if it's worth it to take the time and try to extract all these pieces out of your, your local lumber. But if you do, it can kind of get you started. Uh, starting a project like this can be pretty intimidating. And if you can buy the pieces locally for $9 for a board, you know, we can all afford $9 and, and buy a few boards like that. Start your cut list, work on your pieces, extract them out, and knock a few pieces off your cut list. Then keep uh, rummaging through the, the wood at, uh, at the local store, try to find pieces that are straight grain, fewer knots, that you can extract the pieces you need out of, and you can get, get started on your project. And you can actually get quite a ways. You can get your wing ribs all built from lumber like that. You can get your tail surfaces all done, your, your ailerons perhaps all done, a lot of stuff like that. Uh, and a lot of your fuselage, actually. Where you're going to have trouble is the wing spars. But even if you, if you do all the stuff uh, available locally, then you can get that done and maybe then just order the spar material you need from aircraft spruce or wicks. Uh, and it'll save you some money that way. Is it, is it really worth it? The, I bought all those pieces of spruce that I needed for about $450. As opposed to spending, you know, maybe, maybe half that on uh, just a few pieces of spruce I needed for the spars and then a hundred bucks maybe on material locally. So it, it doesn't make a big difference in the overall cost, but it's more of a Kickstarter. If you can, if you can get the local wood and start pulling pieces out of it that you need, just being careful to inspect the wood, making sure you have enough growth rings per inch, making sure the runout is not in excess of 1 in 15. That can be enough to, to get you going on the project. And pretty soon, you'll have all your wing ribs done. Then you'll have your tail done. Then maybe even your fuselage done. 
So you're well on your way to, to getting the airplane done. Now it's time to assemble the wing. Maybe at that time, then you go out and, and order or make, make your run to the supplier and, and get the screws that you need. So don't be intimidated by the project. There's ways to get it going slowly. And you can kind of sneak up on it by buying stuff locally. And it's building an airplane is, is it's kind of like uh, eating the elephant, right? One bite at a time. Buying locally lets you get that first bite. So give it a try, enjoy your project, let me know how it comes out.